Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Thank you for supporting our show. Uh, we're still being demonetized by YouTube, so support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood or rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. Tour dates are going to be posted soon on GrahamElwood.com. It's happening in September and October. Uh, I want to talk about the sad news that Mike Gravel passed away. He was age 91. He ran for president in the 2020 Democratic primary and in the 2008 Democratic primary. And 2008, he made it onto the debate stage, and they made sure that he never did that again. <laughs> and I had the pleasure of interviewing him two years ago, and really awesome um, that the Gravel Institute, which is a bunch of young guys, really wanted to push this message out there of, of and it was, a I'm going to show you clips of his interview and then clips of some other stuff that he did um, and why it was so impressive, his work and why if we had a president like this, we would be in a much better place. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood, a very special guest, uh, presidential candidate, Senator Mike Cravel. Senator, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be on your program and articulate uh, what's going on. So let's get, let's get right into it. I, um, I was on the Jimmy Dore show about a week or two ago and we watched your um, Rock in the Pond uh, from 2008, which was just fantastic. It said so much. Um, and it was a metaphor. Incidentally, it was a metaphor for life that a lot of people didn't understand. You know, you focus on what you want to do with your life, then you do it. That's the rock and the water and the ripples that what you've done in life. And then you walk away to your demise. That that is the metaphor. Yeah, I mean, it was it it was great. And so now you're running for president again in 2020, and you've been very outspoken against the military industrial complex. Um, you've spoken out. I believe it's just you and Tulsi are the only ones that have spoken out about Julian Assange being jailed. Um, and so tell us why you're running. You're running as a Democrat and. Well, I, the running is, is a little bit of a euphemism. <laughs> in point of fact, uh, in 08, when I ran, it was at the suggestion of a, a friend of mine who was living in Mexico. And he pointed out that if I wanted to get um, what floats my boat, which is creating a legislature of the people, to get that out to the public, the best way to do it is to run as a, a presidential candidate. Well, I was in seven debates, and most of the questions by the pundits all involved the war and other domestic issues. So I didn't get a chance to get that out. And then when uh, David Oak and uh, his partners contacted me a month or so ago, asking if I would run for president again, I just said to them, do you have any idea how old I am? And they said, yeah, we don't care. <laughs> you know, what we want to do is get you into debates so that you can move the dialogue to the left. Well, uh, that was persuasive, but not enough. And what I found out is they had done research extensively on me and incidentally Tulsi Gabbard. And uh, they felt that uh, what I represented was what they represented or wanted to see represented in the debates. So I gave them, uh, as a result of that, I gave them and said to go ahead, sure. And then, then I gave them access to my Twitter account. So they've been Twittering uh, statements by me. Uh, and it's interesting that a friend of mine called me and he said, Gravel, God darn it, you sure are Twittering a lot of great stuff. I says, well, I've not Twittered a word. This is all these young kids who are familiar with my candidate, my record, and they're the ones that are running the show. And so the only uh, caveat I have with them is that I could veto if they're doing something I just don't want to be associated with. And I did point out to them that negatives are not a very, uh, a very effective way of getting a message across. But, you know, they, they have their shtick, and, uh, and I honor that. But I just can't believe how well they've done. We have over 36 million hits on a website. 36 million. Uh, and then in addition to that, uh, we have uh, over $60,000 that's been contributed, basically from small contributors. Uh, uh, and uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, 60 or uh, I think it's 120 volunteers who want to participate in the 
I donated to Gravel, Bernie, and Tulsi. Tul Tulsi and Bernie, I kind of like my money back. Not with this guy. And it was impressive how these young people got behind him and, and got a lot of people to wake up to who Mike Gravel was. I didn't know that much about him. And here's why they, the Democratic Party made sure he did not make it on the debate stage. Because here's what he said in 2008. And former Alaska Senator Mike Gravel. Senator, thank you. And Senator Gravel, for those who may not be familiar with your past, two terms U.S. Senate from Alaska, you played a role in the fight to cut off money for the Vietnam War. What would be your advice, Senator, for the elected officials on this stage who are at a conflict, opposed to the conflict, but also feel the need to uh, keep on funding the conflict? Well, first off, understand that this war was lost the day that George Bush invaded Iraq on a fraudulent basis. Understand that. Now, with respect to what's going on in the Congress, I'm, I'm really embarrassed. So we passed, and the media is in a frenzy right today with what has been passed. What has been passed? George Bush communicated over a year ago that he would not get out of Iraq until he left office. Do we not believe him? We need to find another way. That's where I, I really would like to sit down with Pelosi and with Reid. And, and I would hope the other senators would focus on how do you get out? You pass a law, not a resolution, a law making it a felony to stay there. And I'll give you the text of it. And if, you, if you're worried about filibuster, here's what you do tactically. They can pass it in the House. We got the votes there. In the Senate, let them filibuster it. And let Reid call up every at 12 o'clock every day to have a cloture vote and let the American people see clearly who's keeping the war going and who's not. And that's just the beginning of the tactic if they're tough enough to do it. Senator, Senator Gravel, <laughs> at a forum earlier this year, I want to get this right. You said it doesn't matter whether you are elected president or not. So then why are you here tonight? Shouldn't debates be for candidates who are in the race to win the race? Ryan, you're right. I made that statement. But that's before I had a chance to stand with them a couple, three times. It's like going into the Senate. You know, the first time you get there, you're all excited. My God, how did I ever get here? Then about six months later, you say, how the hell did the rest of them get here? <laughs> and, and I got to tell you, after standing up with them, some of these people frighten me. They frighten me. When, when you have mainline candidates that turn around and say that there's nothing off the table with respect to Iran, that's code for using nukes, nuclear devices. I got to tell you, I'm president of the United States. There will be no preemptive wars with nuclear devices. To my mind, it's immoral, and it's been immoral for the last 50 years as part of American foreign policy. Let's use a little moderator discretion here. Senator Gravel, that's a weighty charge. Who on this stage exactly tonight uh, uh, worries you uh, so much? Well, I would say the top-tier ones. The top-tier ones. They I'm made statements. Oh, Joe, I'll include you, too. You have a certain arrogance. You want to... You wanna, tell the Iraqis how to run their country. I got to tell you, we should just play get out. Just play get out. It's their country. They're asking us to leave, and we insist on staying there. And why not get out? What harm is it going to do? Oh, the, you hear the statement, well, my God, the soldiers will have died in vain. The entire deaths of Vietnam died in vain. And they're dying in vain right this very second. You know what's worse than a soldier dying in vain? is more soldiers dying in vain. That's what's worse. Short answer question. One sentence, and uh, I'm going to ask each of you, beginning with Senator Gravel. This is from Paula in Conway, South Carolina. What is the most significant political or professional mistake you have made in the past four years? And what, if anything, did you learn from this mistake which makes you a better candidate? And make the sentence no longer than 20 seconds, okay? Senator Gravel. I've just grown up. I'm the senior statesman on here, and I was beginning to feel like a potted plant standing over here. But uh, let me point out to you, in one sentence, you know, I won't hold their youth and inexperience against them. Thank you, sir. Uh, same question. Uh, the other than Iraq, uh, three most uh, important uh, enemies to the United States. We have no important enemies. What we need to do is begin to deal with the rest of the world as equals, and we don't do that. We spend more as a nation on defense than all the rest of the world put together. Who are we afraid of? Who are you afraid of, but Brian? I'm not. And Iraq has never been a threat to us. We invaded them. 
I mean, it, it is unbelievable. The military industrial complex not only controls our government lock, stock and barrel, but they control our culture. Well, uh, your two terms in the Senate representing Alaska have sat on top of, of course, a huge reserve of oil. Uh, with the French system as the model, is the United States, in your view, woefully behind in its use of nuclear energy? No, not at all. I think there had to be a maturation process, and I'm the one that started the nuclear critique in this country. I'm also the one that denied the boots on the ground for George Bush today when I filibustered the end of the draft. And I'm also the one that brought about the Alaska pipeline by one vote in the Congress. So when you ask about the energy issues or the other issues, let me just tell you, I want to answer the question on the war and, and on what's going on. We are mischaracterizing terrorism. Terrorism has been with civilization from the beginning and it will be there till the end. We're going to be as successful fighting terrorism as we are fighting drugs with, with the war. It doesn't work. What you have to do is to begin to change the whole foreign policy. The Republicans who are charging Democrats about, about not going for the defense of this country, my God, this invasion brought about more terrorists. Osama bin Laden must have been rolling in his blankets Senator. how happy he was over our invading Iraq. Time is Senator Gravel, uh, 30 seconds, please. No, with respect to Iran, we, we've sanctioned them for 26 years. We scared the bejesus out of them when the president says they're, they're evil. Well, you know something? These things don't work. They don't work. We need to recognize them. And you know something? Who is the greatest violator of the non-proliferation treaty? The United States of America. We signed a pledge that we would begin to disarm, and we're not doing it. We're expanding our nukes. Who the hell are we going to nuke? Senator Tell me, Brian. Who, who, Barack, who's, I'm not who are you want to nuke? nuke? I'm not planning to nuke anybody right now, Mike. I Good. promise. You. Good. We're safe. Uh, for a while. Senator, uh, senators both, thank you. You see why they didn't want that on stage in 20, in 2020? In 2008, oh, he was locked as a windbird. But after Bernie came through in 2016, I mean, more people were listening to that message or would have listened to that message. Look at how popular just Mike Ravel's online campaign was, which a bunch of young, a couple of young people that were very sophisticated using his words on social media, but they got his message out to younger people. So all these younger people were like, damn, who's Mike Ravel? I want on board with that guy. And this is his campaign ad from 2008, and he did a version, like a new version of it for 2020. That's badass. <laughs> so it just keeps going.
Mike Gravel, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm honored. He took time to come on this little show two years ago and you know, I'm honored that, uh, you know, he really did all these indie media shows, you know, and wanted to get his message out and he wasn't delusional. He wasn't like, he just was trying to pull the party to the left in the best way he knew how. And that was, uh, and he did a great job and he, you know, got people like me to learn about him and you know, he helped defund the Vietnam war and this country has gone so far to the right. And we outspend the next 10 countries combined on military. If we cut our military budget in half, we would still spend just under $200 billion more than China. <laughs> and he understood that. And if we had a president like this, we had leaders like this, people actually cared. And he spoke the truth. You people frighten me. He was talking about Hillary, Obama, and Biden. He said, you people frighten me. And gee, who won in 08? Those three assholes made it into the White House. And they dropped more bombs than Bush. And during the 08 debates, it was all, oh, Bush is crazy, got us into these bad wars. And Obama ran on the, I'm getting us out of the wars, the hope and change. And what did he do? He dropped more bombs than Bush. That is a goddamn fact. It's not crazy conspiracy. He dropped more bombs than Bush. And now Biden's in the White House with Kamala Harris, who's going to be president when Biden steps down because his, he's losing his, he doesn't have his cognitive abilities at 100%, which you need, I think, I think to be president. They have Alzheimer's and they covered it up. So, and I don't think they, they're not really hiding it. They're just going to let it get so bad that it's like, oh, Kamala is going to step up and she'll keep the bombing going. She'll keep, get, Biden is spending more money on ice than Trump is. Kamala Harris during the campaign, we're going to open our borders, not close them like big, bad, evil Trump. And then what she say two, three weeks ago, don't come here. Doors are closed. Stay home. We're going to keep sanctioning you and causing war and poverty and destruction in all these Central and South American countries and then act so shocked that people want to come to our borders because we've ruined their countries with assholes like Juan Guaido and other bullshit sanctions that just profit the billionaires. He called it out in 08. He called it out back in the 70s in the Senate. He called it out in 2019 and 2020. This is why I will not vote for Democrats. Thanks for watching our show, everybody. Going to be announcing tour dates uh, soon, so check back to GrahamElwood.com. And thank you, Mike Gravel and all the people that worked with them uh, for at least getting the message out there. And, you know, I hope his uh, legacy lives on and shows like this. But actually, when I see older people like that, that really stood for something their whole lives, uh, in a way, I'm like, it might be good that they're passing away now so they don't have to watch things just get worse, which is what he was trying to prevent. Because, you know, he's got kids and grandkids and stuff like that. So anyway, thanks, Mike. Uh, Wherever you are, I hope you're happy and safe. So thanks for watching the show, everybody. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed.
by YouTube. They're unsub. We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.